There was a teacher not too long ago who cared immensely about the academic welfare of his students and every other type of welfare as well. He was a teacher who would always warn his students well in advance of their exams, saying to them, make sure you make the necessary preparations before they arrive. He in fact was so concerned over his students that he even gave them the questions that they are to expect in the exam in advance so that none of them can claim that they were caught of God. However, these students split into three different categories. A category of students who said the teacher is lying. A second category of students who said we believe the teacher. However, we will not prepare for the exam now, but we will delay when we get a little bit older and the date for the exam begins to near, then we will begin to prepare. And a third category of students, they were the wise ones. Not only did they believe the claims of the teacher, but they also made preparations for the exam well in advance. And therefore, when the exams took place, it was only category number three of the students who were happy during the exams and happy after the exams when they graduated and passed with flying cuts. That teacher was Prophet Muhammad And those students is every human being to walk the face of the earth who came during his time and after him. And the exam that he had warned us of is the questioning, the interrogation, the examination before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. What are these questions? Question number one. You are to expect a question on the day of judgment pertaining to your salah. There will be a thorough and a very agonizingly precise interrogation with regards to every bowing and prostration and wudu and khushu' concentration and time of each salah and the delaying of each salah and thus the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said as imam al-tirmidhi narrates in his jami' on the authority of abi huraira he said the very first thing that man will be asked about in front of allah on the day of judgment is his prayer if the prayer is complete, the rest of his actions will be complete and he would have success and prospered. If however the prayer is lacking, then he has ruined and he had failed. If however he says there is a deficiency in the obligatory salah, Allah will say to the angels, look into his optional salah which we can use to patch up the deficiency in his obligatory salah. He says, and then the rest of his actions will be assessed in a similar manner. Uh, so we understand that if there is a deficiency in your obligatory salah, the optional ones will be there to make things up. Therefore, brothers and sisters, how do we prepare for question number one? By ensuring that the obligations are complete. In terms of how we pray them, when we pray them and where we pray them may Allah make us the people of the masjid not only that the wise Muslim prepares for this question by amassing huge amounts of reserve voluntary acts of worship to patch up the deficiency that will be there this is question number one question number two you can expect a question with regards to the delights. Every bit of goodness and pleasure that you had enjoyed in the life of this world, there will be a question in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about it 
down to the very micro blessing. Imam Tabari narrates in his tafsir that Qatada said, Allah is going to ask every recipient of any blessing with regard to that blessing that he had enjoyed. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, as was narrated by Ibn Hibban in his Sahih on the authority of Abi Hurairah, on the day of judgment, Allah will say to him, did I not give you horses and camels? Did I not give you authority on earth? Did I not marry you to such and such woman whilst there were other men who wanted to marry her, but I pushed them away and I married you to her, Allah says. Then you are going to be asked about the delights down to the very micro blessing. Thus Abi Dhar would say the companion as was narrated by Ibn Abi Shayba and his Al-Musannaf. He said, the person who possessed two dirhams only in the life of this world, will suffer a greater interrogation than the one who only had one dirham. As for question number three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, these are questions that were found in one hadith that focus on a person's life, youth, money, and knowledge, and application. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as was narrated by Imam al-Tirmidhi in his jami' on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Man will not move from the court of Allah on the day of judgment till we are asked about five things. Till he is asked about his life and what he did with it. His youth, how he spent it. His money, how he acquired it and how he disposed of it. And number five, his knowledge and how he applied it. Ya Allah, look at the clarity of the questions. This is from the Rahmah of Allah. He said his life and what he did with it. What does that mean? You're 60, 70, 80 years here on earth. What was the theme of those years? What was it that occupied your time the most by day and your thoughts and your concerns the most by night? What was the cause that you truly lived for and died for? This is the question, your life and what you did with it. His youth and what he did with it. Ah, when your urges and desires, my cravings and urges, when they had rocketed through the ceiling, when our desire had reached an all-time high, how did we behave? Or were you a youth who was different? That's a question that requires an answer. He said his wealth how he made it, how he spent it. The avenues of making quick cash today, they are countless. How did you make your money? And then when you made that money, what did you do with it? Did you enrich your mother and father? Did you spare your mother and father from the burden of needing to take loans from strangers whilst you have a full-time job as their son? What did he do with his money? Did you enrich your family? Did you enrich those who are poor? Did you give your zakat on time every single year and make up for the years that you had missed as well? What did he do with his wealth? What he did with his knowledge. Allah has blessed us with tens and hundreds of Friday sermons and lectures. This is a privilege that will not pass without a question on the day of judgment. Question number eight. With regards to our limbs, our senses that Allah has built within us. A privilege that will require an answer. Eyes, ears, the touch, the smell, and the other senses Allah Almighty says. Do not follow that which you have no knowledge of. Because indeed the hearing and the seeing and a person's heart, all of this shall be questioned about on the day of judgment. La ilaha illallah. Thus, how does a wise Muslim prepare for that exam question? When his eyes are presented with the haram, the gaze is lowered. When the ears are presented to that which is haram, and we know what they are and what this is, the ears are covered. 
when the heart is polluted with doubts with regards to Allah and His oneness and His justice. When our hearts are polluted with envy, hasad, greed, selfishness, we cleanse our hearts. Question number nine. With regards to every evil that you saw happening in front of you and what was your stance towards it? A question that is so heavy that some of the companions would cry when they came to learn of this hadith. Allah will say to a person on the day of judgment, why was it when you saw the evil happening in front of you, you didn't say anything about it? The Messenger وسلم, says, if Allah allows this person to give the correct response, this man will say, oh Allah, I had hope in you and I was afraid of the people. He was honest. Abu Sa'id, the narrator of this hadith, he cried when he heard this. And he said, he said, Wallahi, we have seen wrong things, but we did become afraid to speak out. It could be a friend, it could be a colleague at work, it could be a member of family who is committing an act of haram in front of you. As for question number 10, about our actions in general, Allah says, by your Lord, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are going to ask them all together about what they used to do. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say, you are going to meet your Lord, and he's going to ask you about your actions.